Welcome everyone to what is the very, very first new iteration of eSports WSC. This time around, still with me, Rene Butler, and alongside John Armstrong, that I will actually say it now, John, the rally legend by now. You have Oof. been with us many, many years ago. I have, uh, 2018 champion, so quite a while back, and then runner-up in 2019 also. Um, but yeah, thinking back to then, it's really uh, put me on this journey of where I am at the at the moment with uh, working for EA Sports uh, on uh, creating the game that we have here today and also doing my real life rally driving also. Yeah, maybe we should quickly talk about today. We're actually in Warsaw. So once again, we're traveling. Esports obviously happened in many, many countries by now already. We happen in, in Greece, we happen in Wales, we happen in Belgium, everywhere around the globe kind of. And this time around, a lot of things are new. Formats new. New drivers, it, we have a completely new title, right? That, that's why John is here. Obviously, EA uh, bring us the newest um, eSports WSC title, which is the base that we're using going forward. And this is the first tournament to kick that off. So not really the eSports WSC full season yet. It's not in full swing, so don't worry. You did not miss the qualifiers in the game or whatsoever. All of that will come in 2024. But for today, it's more seeing where we're going with it, kind of, in some sort of a full... Yeah, tournament style. It's full esports, I would say. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. And I think, um, as you say, it's a new title. Everything is brand new. The game's been made from the ground up. And all of the drivers here have lots of experience in different titles, different disciplines. So I think it's going to be really exciting to see who's the fastest on this game. Um, we've got some very, very quick drivers. I think there's going to be a very big challenge. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, see how it goes. In terms of format, it is a knockout trophy, so uh, name kind of gives it away what we're doing. There. So there's a qualifier stage with three different stages. We accumulate those times, and basically that qualifier sets the seeding for the the rest of the tournament. Where do we go from there? Yeah, then we're going to go into quarterfinals, semifinals, and then there's going to be a big uh, final with uh, the two remaining competitors where they go head to head and see who's going to be the, the winner of the event. and. Uh, we're going to put two simulators together. They're going to see each other out of the corner of each other's eyes. And there's going to be yeah, a very heated battle. I think it's going to be really, really close. Yeah, biggest chains, chains so far from the previous years. That means you can get eliminated. That's how it is. They will go head to head. For the slower driver, that's it. Boom, we put you back on the plane, send you back home. <laughs> and they can obviously stay here with us in, in Warsaw. But that's it. That's how, that's, that's how we do it. And for this very first one, as I said, there was no open qualifier, there was no online qualifier, so you did not miss that at home. Don't worry about it. Instead, it's an invitational. And we have, as you said already, a lot of big names with experience in different titles, right? We have Nexel, obviously, being here, four times eSports WSC champion, but on the previous titles, which are obviously different now. And then we have people coming like, like Yuna, for example, who's now for Guild eSports, another big name in gaming, who has a ton of experience in Dirt Rally previously. So yeah. That would be very interesting. Yeah, I think um, because uh, Dirt Rally was made by Co-Masters, which is now owned by EA Sports, uh, it could feel very familiar for Yuna because some things will be very similar. Um, so he's a big favorite today. Uh, but yeah, some of the other drivers come from different disciplines, um, circuit racing, so on the tarmac stages especially. I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing those challenge uh, the top drivers of, of Rally Esports. Let's meet today's contenders as they introduce themselves. I'm Patrick and I race uh, for Team Forzilla this event. Uh, it's, it's my first time uh, driving for, for them and uh, we really look forward for this event and and, and future that awaits for WRC Sports. I've been to a to, to few events, uh, international and of course uh, I won um, WRC 2018 uh, Germany Esports Championship. Uh, and I was eighth in, um, in the world final that year. Um, since then, I drive a lot in uh, Richard Burns and other stuff. My name is Kamil Grobowski and I'm racing for Williams Esports. Usually I drive on iRacing. I've been a competitor of in the 2022 Porsche Dakar Esports Super Cup. And I'm competing in a lot of, um, let's say, iRacing uh, Esports series, uh, special events I do. But on the WRCI, it's my first Esports event, so quite excited. I'm John Bednovich Harris. Uh, username Eyes Amusing. I actually started competing uh, long ago in 2013 on the Formula One game, but in terms of esports, uh, I mainly started off in WRC, uh, purely rally, so I class myself now as a rally driver purely. My name is Dylan Nguyen, I'm racing for Race Clutch. My past in esports WRC. Um, I'm not sure I'm a real, real contender uh, due to um, you know, knowledge and issues about the stages. 
But then I'm here to have fun and just give it a go and we will see what happens. My name is Luan uh, and I'm also known as Nexo. Really looking forward to, to the event uh, with all my experience I have uh, in rally with all the championship I had. So yeah, really, really looking forward. I have uh, four titles, so yeah, really uh, want to, to have a, a fifth one. I'm Nina Polov, I'm racing for Veloci. So I've no experience in gaming. I only started content creating for four, like four months ago, but I've been karting since the age of five, and next year I'll be a Formula 4 racing driver. I'm facing Nexel and I'm trying not to crash. I am Moritz Löhner and I'm driving from Maus. I have quite some, some history in esports. I've um, been driving it since a very long time, and esports especially as well. Been on basically every stage already. Um, quite some championships to my name as well, so that's nice, but I'm new here to WRC. I've done one event in the past, in 2018 it was in Germany, like a German final kind of, without any prior experience, so that one didn't went well, but um, yeah, now I was able to prepare myself quite well for this one, and I think it's going well, but we will see in the end. My name is Jona Pankkonen and I'm racing for Good Esports. I have previous esports experience from the Dirt World Series, uh, from there I'm the world champion from 2018 and 2019, uh, I'm, I'm the vice champion in 2020. For my favorite surface, I would say it's pretty much a 50-50 for tarmac and gravel. I really enjoy both, but um, mm, yeah, 50-50. So I think it will be interesting to see who can adapt to which tracks the most, because they also don't know the stages before we actually get going, right? Yeah, well, we've given them a list of 12 stages before they came here a week in advance, so they've been able to practice the stages, but they don't know what format they're going to be in, so they don't know what ones they're going to get for the qualifier round, what they're going to have for quarterfinals, the semi-final and the final, so um, it's going to be a big challenge, and also we may load the stage in wet or dry, so also there's a, there's a bit of uh, jeopardy there that they don't know how slippery it's going to be when they load into the stage, but it will be the same for everyone, so don't worry. Yeah, but John really enjoyed is that part like throwing them into something that they might not know right and then see how see how that goes I can I can see the qualifiers nearly ready so we're, we're about to get going but maybe we should quickly talk about and the, the new game and the new cars because we're also in a new generation when it comes to WSC so what is it those drivers now have to handle and, and throw out there on the stage so yeah it's a brand new game lots of new stages we've got over 600 kilometers of stages in this game 78 cars so there's a big variety here today, we're going to be using the Rally 1 cars from WRC. Um, so they have a hybrid system, and that's a big talking point. If you talk to the drivers here, you know, they, they're trying to figure out the quickest way to drive them. They have to regen the hybrid system under braking, and then hold that until the exit of the corner. So they're waiting, waiting, waiting until they went past the apex, and then they can throw the throttle and get that boost. But if they go too early, they'll lose the boost too early, and they'll be slower down the next straight. So that's a big talking point for this event. And um, I think we'll, we'll keep a close eye on that. But it's um, the biggest game we've ever made at uh, the Codemaster Studio. So many features. So yeah, it's, uh, it's really, really fun. The guys are enjoying, the guys and girls are enjoying the game. We've got really good feedback. So I think um, we're just looking forward to a, a close race now. Yeah, a lot to conquer for everyone. That's set three stages. That's the beginning of our quality session. And we'll actually have a look at that, how that went, how the seeding is from going into the knockout stage. So here we go. First task for our competitors was the qualification. Three different stages for eight rally drivers set the seeding for the knockout phase. Even with everyone having to get familiar with the provided equipment, it became clear right from the start that the pace would be very quick. It was four-time champion Nexel who came out on top after stage one, but newest skilled esports driver Yuna Pakinen kept it within a second, applying pressure early on in qualification. Change of scenery to Croatia got us to a very first tarmac stage, posing a completely different challenge to the drivers. Being familiar with that surface, it went from sports driver Moritz Luna with the fastest stage time, further building his image as a tarmac force to reckon with. A remarkable performance by former esports WC runner Isaac Musing put him back into contention for the top seed, but even though he was able to beat Yuna Pakinen on stage 3, it wasn't enough to change the overall outcome of the qualification. Nexel held on to the top spot, followed by Pankinen and Isaac Musing, with Fortzilla's Gerber beating Luna on stage 3 to 4th position. Uh, we got qualifying behind us, that means we got our first 8, and in this case that means if we look at the graphic now, it's the best out of qualifying, going up against position 8 basically, and then 2 against 7, uh, 3 against... Oh, that's never start numbers on a camera, never <laughs> works out, but you get the drill of the format in general. And we will kick off tonight's knockout with Kamil 
going up against Yona. That's I, I, it's Williams against Guild. That's that's a big battle right away. It's a huge one, and and like you said, um, it's the top qualifier against the the lower ones. Uh, so it's going to be a big challenge for Camille. Um, but sometimes that's the challenge you need to just give it everything, throw caution to the wind, and and try to set the best time you can. So. I'm expecting him just to go in and, and try to, to absolutely go flat out. Uh, for Yuna, he obviously knows he's got it in, in, in the bank to, to go through this round, so it'll be interesting to see what his approach is. Does he take a cautious one and try to get through? But then, of course, he might come under some more pressure if he's a bit too cautious. Getting ready to go here. Yeah, we got them at the start line. They will not be able to see each other, but we will be. That's that's a good part about it, right? But let's see how our first semi-final kicks off here. It is full tarmac, so no surface change in between. But it will come down to all these hairpins. Like, how do you approach them? You're, you're a rally driver yourself, John. Talk to get through about how do you do the perfect hairpin to keep that momentum going. It's all about picking, you know, where you want to break and then try to depends how tight the hairpin is, these ones are quite open, so you want to take a wide line. Once you're near the apex, then you're going to have a quick uh, pull of the handbrake to rotate the car to lock the rear tires, and uh, then get back in the power to continue the slide. Alright, we've got Yona here with a slight bit of a gap, I would say, already. Like, had a really good start, got that traction. Coming up all, obviously, they're all-wheel drive cars, right? So traction isn't really the problem here. But look at how tidy it is. We saw that already during the qualification when it comes to Jonas' driving style. On tarmac, it's so smooth, absolutely incredible. He is a very smooth driver. Um, you know, he's got really good racing lines. And the steering wheel inputs, they're very minimal. You know, he turns once into the corner, then he opens the steering on the exit and he's just carrying that speed and we can already see he's got a lot of confidence he's um he's got a bit of a gap already on Camille uh, but now we're approaching a faster section and getting closer to the hairpin so it's uh, it's going to get interesting from here yeah, 52 was the first sector split for Yuna and with that just trailing his best by tiny margin so really on point right now and obviously uh, he brings a lot of experience. He practiced nearly all of the all of the stages, but it's still rallying. Everything can go wrong at just a, a point of time. It's like it's a split split second, and all of a sudden you find yourself in the tree. Not ideal, and that's where Kamal can really pick up. So far, I have to say, Kamal doing a great job staying in this stage, kind of being close enough to wait for that one mistake that he might do. That's exactly what he needs to do at this point. Is just keep in touch, try to keep a good rhythm, and. Um, yeah, anything can happen. He, he needs to stay in touch in case uh, Yuna has some sort of issue. But we're getting into this section now with the hairpins. And, um, oh, oh Kamil with the first mistake here in the hairpin. That was, was there the handbrake missing? He couldn't really get the car to rotate into that hairpin and then clip the outside. That must have cost a lot of time now. Yeah, and sometimes if you go too deep into the braking on a hairpin, you'll lock the front wheels and you'll just understeer to the outside. And I think, I think that's exactly what happened in that instance. Let's hope he will pick up the pace a bit later on in stage. We're not even halfway through yet, so there is enough time. Well, Yona now approaching his second hairpin downhill into that tight right hander. But as he said already, the, the corner is tight, but there's relatively a lot of space around it compared to some of the other relics. Exactly. This is a, let's say, a, a medium to wide track. It's not super narrow, so they've got space to take racing lines to let the car slide more. Um, but it's very bumpy. You can see that there's undulations in the track here. You have to be careful with the bumps that you don't get caught out with those also. Good happen once again for you. Now maybe we can take that moment to quickly talk about their second challenge, kind of, the mini challenge in this race, which is also the hybrid, right? Because you really have to understand how to use it correctly. Yeah, it's um, one of the big talking points, and especially out of all of these hairpins, you have to be breaking hard into them to regen and get a valid uh, boost. Whenever it's a valid boost, it will go green. Uh, and then on the exit, you have to wait until you can really smash the throttle before uh, you can deploy it, or otherwise you might lose it. So, um, yeah, you'll just see here now on the throttle and now the boost is being deployed. We've got like an eight second gap I, I feel. That's that's kind of what's in between them right now but eight seconds nothing. If you do one bit mistake uh, it's all over this. Terminal damage as well, right? Um, 
which then gets you knocked out kind of immediately uh, when we're looking at this one stage, because there's only this one stage. Whoever wins this goes through to the semi-final. Yeah, it's a straight head-to-head. -head. That puts big pressure on both of them. Um, but like you said, anything can happen. You can have terminal damage. Uh, you can hit a, a reset line, which adds anything from 6 to 20-odd seconds, depending on how far you go off the track. So, Yuna is probably finding a bit of pressure now. He, he probably knows he might have a bit of a gap. They're both beside each other. They can see roughly if they take a glance where each other are on the track, if they know it well. So, I would say that Yuna knows he's got a bit of a lead right now. It's, it's just great that we can have them sit, sit right next to each other so they, they kind of feel being in the event, right? Yeah. Uh, not just uh, online racing in, in a lobby or whatsoever. I have to say, both drivers here on the tarmac, very, very tidy. We see that in the hairpins. Everyone tries to stay very close to the inside, not really flinching the car around, like, which is more a bit like the old style of rallying versus the new one, right? Is it because there's so much grip now in aerodynamics? Yeah, it really depends on the hairpin too. Like you said, the, this track is quite wide, so they have more space to take a, a bit of a racing line and they don't need to slide the car as much as if it was on gravel or if it was a, a cute hairpin, you know, like really, really tight. But, um, yeah. Oh, we got a spin for Yuna. Oh, that is the big mistake maybe that we were waiting for. Carmel now on the hunt for Yuna, who's got around and just over-rotated the car, it seems like way much more than he than he was expecting to. We had Kamil doing a slight mistake and bumping the guardrail, but that was kind of the signal when it comes to for us watching both drivers here, uh, that Yuna then spun the car around. Is it enough though for Kamil to catch up to? I don't feel like yet, but we're definitely down to five seconds or less once again uh, between Kamil and Yuna. Another hairpin here really trying to get close. But I have to say, now it looks a bit more, I, I don't know, Slower. He's, he's, I think he's trying to play it safe right now. He still has that gap and he has to manage it. Yeah, and that will have been a scare. You know, even though he got away with that spin, uh, he wouldn't have wanted to have that and that would have really uh, knocked his, his nerves. And um, yeah, I think he just needs to take it now steady to the finish. He's got one sector left to go. So unless he has a big mistake, um, yeah, he should have this in the bag. And you can see he's actually running really close to his his personal best in practice here. He's only one second down, so... And that with the spin. Yeah. I mean, the only other rally driver that we know that's really good still while spinning or flipping a car, you, because in 2018 you flipped the car on the final stage in our eSports Sports you find still won it. Uh, so it seems like Yuna can do the same here because he still has the upper hand against the Williams eSports driver. And I think with that, we actually will say goodbye to Williams Esports for now. Um, obviously, they can return during the season. That's a good thing. It's just a kickoff event, right? Uh, to get everything going for next year. And now he comes across the line here for Yuna and Guild Esports with that will eliminate Williams Esports in the first quarter final. I think, even though it, it might not look like it, don't get me wrong, Yuna is absolutely incredible. He's super quick, but it wasn't that big of a gap as I expected. I thought he could pull away a bit further than that. Yeah, I think um, it was a really good showing from Camille. He'd done a really good job there of keeping in touch. And as we said, Yuna was probably holding back ever so slightly, and he did have that big spin. Um, it was quite a close call. That He just touched the wheel on the outside, and, and it rotated the car. But um, yeah, it's uh, Yuna P who goes through. This time around, we actually set sail to a Rally Monte Carlo, which probably looks surprising to some people out there. It's in the dry, <laughs> and uh, yeah, people think of, of Monte Carlo in the ice, but that's a beautiful thing in EA Sports WRC, is you can play each location in any season from the year. So right here, I think we're in either spring or summer. It's something that uh, probably everyone that went over black ice during the real rally was wishing for. <laughs> Did not have. Yeah. Oh, we've crashed right away. Snow, but that's a very early one here for Troublemaker. Getting into trouble right away here with some of the wall, stone walls on the right side. Getting Did he just clip onto it? Yeah, he it's sort really of under he understeered into the, the rock face and there was like an edge of a rock sticking out. So it really caught the front of the car. Um, so that's... He had a re reverse, select neutral, get in reverse, get going again, so he dropped probably 10 seconds. 
Um, but the interesting thing that I've noticed with Aizamuzin is he is using the simple pace notes, which is a new feature for this game too. Um, it's quite interesting, it just means that you have slightly less detailed pace notes. Um, so he obviously feels like that's enough for him to, to get through and set good times. That was really close to the wall for eyes amusing on the left side. <laughs> Crazy, but obviously it becomes a mental game now for Troublemaker, right? Having a mistake so early on in the stage means you, you're constantly training, he knows that, right? But you have to keep your game together. There's still a chance, it's not over yet, it's a long stage here uh, at the Rally Monte Carlo, but it's obviously not the ideal start, the start he was wishing for. And the worst thing he could do now is push too hard, trying to catch up that time he's lost and make further mistakes, so... He really has to push, try to gain some time, but make no more mistakes because, yeah, if he has another one, then I think that's going to be really hard to, to claw back that time. We're once again back to Tarmac, just like we saw in the first uh, quarter final. But even though it is Tarmac, it is different when we look at the width of the, the track that they can they can use, right? We've got these walls left and right, which means if you rotate the car too early and to clip those edges, it's over for you. Exactly. There's so many obstacles in Monte Carlo. You've got walls, you've got barriers, you've got these little wooden fences at the side, and the rock faces which stick out in the road. So you might think here that you're going to just razz the inside of the, the corner, but you end up hitting the rock sticking out. So you have to be so precise. And yeah, like we said, these guys practice the stages so they know where the, where the big obstacles are. But um, oh, once again here for Troublemaker, a bit with the rear bumper into the wall. Another mistake, another costly mistake when it comes to time. Seem, he seems to be a bit out of rhythm. We talked about it. Is it the first time that Ice Amusing is beating his teammate? And right now it looks really, really good for him. And I have to say, every time they go in along these stone walls, because I, I have been at the Rella Monte Carlo, driving around the stages, you know, call it what, what everyone does when they're there, right? And even in a, in a slow car, it's dangerous. It was, <laughs> yeah. And we just had a real twitchy moment there from Troublemaker. Uh, and both of them struggled with that hairpin. Um, we've seen Eyes Amusing struggle to get the rotation, and uh, again, the same situation for Troublemaker on the same hairpin. But I feel like he's making up a bit of time. It looks like he's getting closer. A bit too much grip every single time they come into the hairpin, not really getting the rears to lock completely to them, throw it around, and that makes it so hard because they're narrow. Those hairpins are super narrow. And let's look at the times we have. I think the gap is not that big anymore, to be honest. Ice Amusing also not as quick, not as confident maybe, uh, than he would normally be in previous esports WC seasons coming into the hairpin here. Tucked it nicely to the inside. That was a good one this time around. Yeah, it was really good. I'm just trying to get a reference here for time. Um, it looks like it's roughly 10 seconds of gap here still, going into that hairpin left that uh, Troublemakers just went through. So. Yeah, still 10 seconds to make up here. Can we can we get closer? And we still have half the stage in front of us here in a sunny Monte Carlo. So if you're wondering this, not snow, there is snow obviously in the game. So don't worry. Not like you can't have a snowy Monte Carlo if you really wish to do so. But for today, we got the dry conditions, which I think is good because none of the drivers knew what they're getting into. And if they practice Monte Carlo, then probably with snow. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's so cool to have that variation to drive Monte Carlo with these conditions in the dry, everything feels on the edge. It's um, it's really really fun. And then if you go to the same stage in winter, it's completely ice, and you're <laughs> tiptoeing around the corners. You're trying not to understeer into into obstacles, into walls. Uh, so yeah, it's um, a complete contrast of challenge when you go to this track in winter. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, a lot of hairpins now coming up in this sector. Once again, se first hairpin was good for Ice Amusing. Second hairpin, not getting that rear flinched Ooh, around. Oh, now tapping the wall yeah. a bit, yeah. But not enough yet to get Troublemaker back into business for this stage. It's now running into the same hairpin section, both now in a hairpin, but different ones. Wasn't enough yet to pick it up. Ice Amusing just have to keep his car on the stage, on the track right now. That will be an easy win then, he will be very happy about that. Obviously a driver that we saw so often in eSports WRC, bringing all that experience here, it was a run-up yeah. in 2022? Yeah. Yeah, 22, 21. But I, I do feel like uh, Ice Musen has extended his gap here. Um, it does seem like he's stretching it ever so slightly, so it's going to be 
all about trying to control this to the finish now for him and then um, try not to make any more mistakes. He's got one sector left, so... And now the track gets a little bit easier in my opinion. The corners are not so tight and technical. There's no hairpins left, so... Yeah. But it's down the hill, right? So you, you're running, you're rushing in with a bit more weight into every single hairpin. Mm -hmm. But let's quickly talk about the hybrid again, because basically, whenever I touch the brake, I I loaded up the boost, right? Mm -hmm. So is it then about me bre uh, dragging the brake into the hairpin to get really get the boost at the right moment when coming out? So the interesting about the regen is that you have to also have a certain level of the throttle released. So you can't just go down a straight and hold your foot on the <laughs> brake and, and boost it up. You have to do it under what I would say uh, genuine braking zones where you're off the throttle. So it can take a little while to build it up if it's only a short braking zone. If it's a big, long, deep braking zone at high speed, you're more than likely to, to get a valid regen. And then when, you know, because this here is so technical, when they go with the, the boost, they actually don't always get to use it all because they have to brake for the next corner. Uh, so that's how t tight and twisty that Monte Carlo is. And this track is actually the Col de Torini <laughs> going <laughs> in reverse. That was close, yeah. That was very close for Isaac using. I thought he's throwing it away in the last sector off the stage here at Rally Monte Carlo. But it seems like for what is his first time then beating his teammate Troublemaker, here in the quarterfinal, number two, as he crosses the line, 7.09 the stage time for Ice Amusing, and it will be a bit higher for his teammate Troublemaker, who actually had all of that trouble in the very first sector. I think that was the biggest gap that, that we saw. Later on, he was losing out as well in those hairpins. Um, maybe also just the confidence level then after what happened. Yeah, you know, to have such a big mistake in essentially the first or second corner, it's going to knock your confidence really bad, especially because he lost so much time. And in the end, 20 seconds down is quite a lot. I think he did lose. So two out of the way, another two to come. Quarter final number three here in the Knockout Trophy 2023. And this time around, we see Maus Sports, one of the, I say, OG of German esports organization with Moritz Luna. So uh, someone that we kind of describe as a tarmac specialist with all his experience in, in other uh, sim racing esports going up against Ford Silla, so the Ford Works team will be interesting with Patrick Gerber. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting, and like you said, Patrick might be uh, slightly better on the gravel. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, yeah, Moritz um, was really fast on tarmac, so it should be interesting. This stage, if I remember correctly, we've got a section at the beginning which is in a rallycross track. And rallycross, of course, has tarmac sections. So you just see now we're coming up the hill, we'll have a hairpin left, and then we'll shoot into the rallycross track. And uh, yeah, it's a confident start here from Moritz. It's like the over rotating though on that left hand dive for you. I think uh, in practice I saw him going there a bit smoother. But yeah, will that tarmac be enough? for the mouse sports driver to go through. Because the interesting part here is, background story, background fact check kinda. In 2018, Patrick Gerber and Moritz Lund already faced each other in the German qualifier for the eSports WSC, right? And Patrick Gerber was the one going through to the, the main eSports WSC event, which then uh, eventually got won by you. Uh, we got <laughs> the champion in 2018. It was a cool story that when you told me, so yeah. yeah really, really and nice. Moritz Lund didn't make it. So this is revenge, kinda. It's totally revenge and um, now the guys are going back out onto the gravel and it's gravel until the finish. And Estonia, if you played it, it's fast, it's bumpy. You got some man-made jumps, which are really- There's a big jump at the end of the yes. stage, right? Yeah, remember that one. I was trying out this stage, obviously going through the forest here, having the trees left and right, not that easy. It seems like there's a slight gap so far between both drivers and Moritz on having the upper hand. So that's maybe uh, the upper hand he brings over from the tarmac section. But can he keep that lead during the gravel? Look at the, the change in service is just so hard as a driver, right? You get used to the grip, and then all of a sudden, their grip is half, somewhere around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the surface changes is the, one of the biggest things in rallying. Um, you have to see visually how it looks and then anticipate it. You've just oh, seen a, a big <laughs> cut over the illegal cut, let's just say, but over the jump there, it was um, really interesting line Sketchy. there. Sketchy. Yeah. Uh, lucky Moritz Luna made it back onto uh, the track kind of 
and kept that car going. So now Hattavi breaking into the square left, and he's got his boost. Now the boost in being deployed. Off he goes. He got he's he's gapping a little bit here, but still super close. Yeah, it's like the minimal mistake now will change the lead in in this semi-final, uh, in this quarter-final. So far, the closest I would say that we had uh, here between Fortzilla and Mouse Sports now. And we will see who actually makes it. But we're near jump. to halfway through. Both came through the jump nicely, I would say. But it, to me, it looks like Patrick Gerber mm. is taking a bit more risk. He's cutting a tiny bit more every single time we get a tighter corner. Yeah, he's definitely taking lines. He's taking a, that was a bit too early on that corner, and he lost a bit of momentum. Um, but yeah, I'd have to say Moritz is really pushing. He had the bigger of the, the jumps there on that massive jump. And... Uh, now we go into a different section that drivers haven't used today and uh, it goes a little bit faster and more jumps are upcoming so let's uh, hang on tight. Did Moritz actually drop back? I wonder right now. So obviously for us we see both views right we can see both drivers at the same time and I'm wondering right now if it's Patrick Gerber that it is, is Patrick in the lead, head. yeah, he yeah. Did, yeah, he catch lead. What happens? It's really the gravel section here that's costing Moritz Luna the lead for now, but it's still very, very close between both drivers. But it is the Ford Silla one that is currently leading now the slightly more open part of the stage and set. There will be a big jump at the end. Here comes a sequence of jumps, as you can see with the co-driver calls. We've got one two and then there's another one with a corner now left corner over crest oh oh, oh it's half a second oh, in between that is a reset for patrick gerber and that brings the lead back to moritz luna switching once again to really going back and forth in this quarter final now moritz luna once again grabbing the lead holding on to it hopefully for him until the end of the stage but this reset can qu happen so quickly especially on a stage where you come like 180 over a jump, like KPH, really fast, and that was the first big mistake. That's the first big mistake that we've seen uh, in this race. It was super, super close before that, but um, that section in particular, that five left over the jump, if you get your line slightly wrong, which Patrick did, it means you're going off, and uh, unfortunately, he hit a reset line. Another surface change. We saw a quick part on tarmac once again going into the... A 90 degree right hander. Both drivers did well though on that switch. And on side. A big difference this time around. But it's still Moritz leading, and I think he was able to actually create a bit more of a gap now, even without that penalty of the of the reset. But he's got, got a penalty, right? There was yeah, one. Oh, there another, another one. reset for Patrick Gerber. I think now it's the mental game once again. The pressure, knowing that he was so close then getting that reset getting another reset now and for Moritz it's more or less trying to cruise into the finish line now it's the last sector for both drivers and Patrick Gerber would need to push so so hard to make it back and but he can't win this without Moritz doing a big mistake yeah it's final corners here now for Moritz and uh, it, yeah he's, he's got this in the bag he's coming up to the finish line the rerun of the 2018 German qualifier for the eSports WC. And this time around is Moritz Luna taking the W and sending Patrick Gerber into the elimination group or the eliminated uh, group of drivers that we had. It was close for very, very long. But these two resets, it just shows that it is a blink of an eye that can decide fate for you here. And this time around, the Forza driver is on the receiving end, kind of. Yeah, it's a big shame for Patrick there. He's um, He's been preparing a lot for this event. He's very enthusiastic about rally. It was super tight between the two of them. Um, but unfortunately, he made that first mistake. And then from there on out, it was an uphill battle to try and gain that five seconds back. And unfortunately, he went off again and got another penalty. So, yeah, just got a bit too much, I would say, the pressure. and. Yeah. Even, even more so, keep, keep in mind, he is Polish, right? We're here yeah. in Warsaw, so it's like home turf advantage. Uh, not with the rallying, because we went to Estonia, right? Uh, but obviously, our event is happening in Poland. But we have to say goodbye to Polish driver Patrick Gerber after that one. He will be our third eliminated driver. That leaves us with one last quarter final. And John, this will be a tough one, because it's top seed against eighth seed. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Nina, especially. Um, she hasn't got so much experience with the game, um, but she's learning really, really fast. I was super impressed with her driving when she jumped on the game this morning. Um, so I think she just needs to stay out of trouble. Naxal will do his thing. He's got, he's got the rhythm. He's got the pace. Yeah. 
But if he makes a slip up, that's her chance to, to capitalize on it. So it looked good in some of the qualification stages. I think she, like as you said, she picked it up really quickly in terms of pace. But then on the other hand, top seed in this case means Nexel, four times esports WSC champion. So consistency on point, knowing how to throw a rally car around on point, looks on point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's without a contract though, so contract game not that strong. If you're an esports organization out there and you want to pick up a four-time champion, that's your chance now. And we see now Nexel starting into his stage as well. Nina with a slightly different uh, choice of perspective. Also, we could quickly talk about that. Nexel, one of the few that goes for full cockpit. He wants to have, I think, like the feeling of the actual car and how wide it is, right? Yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's down to how the driver prefers to drive. And the bonnet view is really good because you can see how close you get to these rock banks that we have either side. It's really good for judging. Um, but like you said, the interior, it's really good for the car, judging how the car is moving around. And also it feels as if you're sat in the car. So we see Naxal using that. And I'm actually surprised to see Naxal use that. And um, yeah, I think uh, he's, he's really enjoying it. So that's important. Okay, so I'm already clipping one of those <coughs> stone bangs on the right side, but that didn't cost him too much time. Uh, he's currently already building some sort of lead and gap here between him and Nina. But we also see those crests and kind of uh, easy downfalls on the right side for both drivers, right? If you drop down there, that's a massive, massive issue for your stage time. I think one of the big things with Greece is that if you fall down that steep embankment on the right, as, as you say, that can finish your run completely. You'll trigger what's known as a terminal damage sequence. And yeah, that's going to be basically game over. So you need to stay away from that cliff at all costs. Yeah, I experienced that feature quite a often already, so I can tell you out there, don't don't go for it. It's nice, but it's not that great. Oh, oh big mistake by Next. Didn't even realize that. Did he? I think he done that on purpose. Did, did he really just do I think donut? he just done a donut on purpose. No way. He's not showing off like that. There's, oh, there's no, no hit, way. He's hit twice, the wall twice. Then hit, hitting the wall with the rear there. Struggling now in this very, very tight segment. I mean, look at that. There's stones everywhere. There's objects that you can collide with everywhere. You really have to be precise and on point, especially in that upper right hander, that happen going up the hill. But if he's really <laughs> going for showing off that much, oh, that's that's a bit harsh, to be honest. It is. It's um, it's a very <laughs> eager strategy to, <laughs> to be showboating like that. And um, Obviously, that just shows how confident he is in his ability. But uh, yeah, it's definitely give uh, Nina a bit of a opportunity to make up some time, but still trailing behind currently. If that was on purpose, we have to talk to the FIA if there's like a penalty for that. That's uh, <laughs> <I suppose laughs> no behavior from Nexel. Or if he was really confused, because it happened to me on another stage before. Like, I, I thought I had the wrong call and then realized, no, I wasn't in the right direction, but I still tried to maneuver around figure out where to go. We're still in that uphill section. And so far, I have to say, Nina does a great job here, keeping herself in the groove, keeping herself in that, in that stage, in that competition. But it's just not enough for Nexel. He looks so effortless going through those corner combinations. Yeah, he's done a good job here. And a lot of uphill hairpins that they're facing, which are difficult with these stone walls and banks on the outside because if you go into the hairpin, you pull the handbrake, you get the rotation, but if you clip the rear, it straightens the car up again and you lose so much momentum. So it's it's a very tricky stage to get right. And uh, yeah, it's a really tough matchup that we have here. I think it's the hardest stage we saw in the quarterfinals. Yeah. So uh, really the hardest for last, kind of. But next is the right one to do that here. Nina's still looking strong as well. So there's also the terminal damage still kind of on our list, right? What happens if you drop down that hill? But so far, both drivers were able to avoid that. We are in the last sector. It's a very short stage, a bit more than five kilometers long. And Nexel only needs to do a few more slides, a few more controlled wilderness kind of through here and bring that car into the finish line to move on onto the semifinals. Even though it's a short stage though, the average speed is so low because of how technical and twisty and uphill that it is. So yeah, they're looking at approximately 
four and a half minutes. Yeah, that's for next to the case. Coming across the line very, very soon. It should be uh, below 440, oh. and then he's rotate, over rotating he's in last corner. And it, <laughs> I think he I mean, will reverse he into the finish up. line. Oh my goodness me. What is he doing today? 444 for Nexo. So uh, a donut that we saw on the way. Not the one you can eat, but the one that costs you time. And then the reverse entry into the finish here. Nina, though, without big mistakes. And kudos, like, it might look bad for people out there now. It's like, oh, that, that's not good. But this is a very, very hard stage. And for someone to coming into our sport here and managing that without terminal damage, without throwing it around into, into several rocks, that is strong. Yeah, that, that's a really good stage time by her. And uh, yeah, Nina's done a really nice job of getting through there without any big mistakes, which is crucial. Um, but yeah, I think Naxal's lost his marbles slightly. <laughs> <laughs> There's two showboats in the one stage. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I, I didn't really see Nexal as, as that guy that yeah. would showboat during a stage, but somehow that's how we ended up with. And that also means that we now know all the drivers that will move on to the semifinals. Four of them we eliminated four. We will keep four around for the semifinals. And I think those matchups, they will be tough now for everyone. Like. It, for Yona, for Nexel, because all the drivers in there, very, very strong. Yeah, as uh, the saying goes, the, the cream rises to the top, and you, yeah, naturally, <coughs> with knockouts, we've got uh, stronger and stronger drivers being paired together now, so. I'm What's your biggest surprise then? Like, who, who do you think that got eliminated that you expected to make it into the semifinal? I think Patrick was probably the biggest one. He got a bit unlucky there with one of the reset lines. Uh, but yeah, I, I did favor him in, in that battle against Moritz, but you know, Moritz is a very, very capable esports driver and he's applied that mentality and, and managed to get the upper hand there. So I think that's my biggest shock. Uh, and you, what, what, what about you? I mean, I, I, I would have to go with Patrick here. I really also expect that Patrick to be a pr proper threat. And uh, just to catch you up with things that are happening on social media, obviously, uh, Moritz Luna also does videos about WC, uh, the game, right? And uh, he's using a formula wheel at home. So we were joking about if he can actually handle a full steering wheel uh, and not getting confused. But so far, he managed to get his hands in the right position. And the rotation was correct as well. Uh, so I think he will also have a good shot here at the summer finals. So we will have, obviously, soon a look into the pairings, figuring out who's good up next. Let's have a short recap. First though, opener today was the match of Yuna Pankin of Guild Esports taking on Williams Esports driver Kamil Gerbrowski on another Croatian tarmac stage. The second seeded Finn was smooth as ever, not really giving any glimpse of hope to Grabowski and with that secured his spot in our semi-finals. Up next was a duel between race clutch teammate Aizem using a Troublemaker thrown into a very unusual setting with the dry and sunny Monte Carlo stage. It was Troublemaker with a mistake that cost him a potential win, allowing Aizem using to move on into the next phase of our tournament. Team for Attila vs Mousesports was the third quarter final with mouse driver Moritz Luna having the upper hand against Patrick Gerber on the Estonian gravel stage, getting him into the semi-final. For last quarter, it was top seed Nexel taking on Veloce Vex driver Nina Potloff under the burning sun of Greece. With boosted confidence, out of qualification, and a lot of experience in esports WC to his name, Nexel made clear that quarterfinals was not where he was planning to end his day, eliminating Potloff in the process. Hello everyone, uh, we've got a very special guest with us right now. It's Mikko Marcik, who is a WRC2 driver with the Skoda Fabia RS. And uh, Mikko, first of all, congratulations for your big win yesterday. I know it's a very special event to you, and uh, we've just had a, a first go with EA Sports WRC, so tell us our, your, your first impressions. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, it's nice to meet you in Poland. Uh, that was my first touch with the, with the new game, and uh, we did uh, two stages on the tarmac and also on the gravel. Uh, from my perspective, uh, on the tarmac, it looks really good, more like a simulator. It's, it's really good to uh, train tra trial braking, progressive uh, going on the throttle, on the exit uh, of the corners, about the uh, force feedback, I feel the car well. Uh, on the gravel, it's uh, much harder uh, from my perspective to make it like simulator. It's more like a game because it's much, 
much tougher to to show the uh, the difficulties which are which we are finding on the gravel stages, especially in the second loop, like ruts, like some bumps, like uh, how to simulate the damper travel, but. Also, it was it was nice because both stages which I was uh, testing, I know it from the from the real life. Uh, that was Otepa stage in Estonia, also power stage from Rally Catalonia. It's good for every driver to uh, know the stages by heart uh, and and to learn them more and understand. I would like really to recommend to everyone because if someone is not pro driver, there will be a lot of fun. And if someone is uh, a sport driver, it's really good to, to test yourself and develop to real motorsport on, on this game. Well, uh, thank you very much, Miko. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Maybe uh, we will see you in uh, eSports next year, yeah. if you have some more practice on the game. Yeah, and uh, yeah, thanks for, for tuning in and we'll see you soon. Two semi-finals coming up. We're still looking for the two drivers that move on to the grand finale. And our first semi-final that we see is both favorites kind of in one of the semi-finals. Uh, Jona going up against Isamusing. That's our very first uh, semi-final. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating battle. Depends what surface it's on, of course. We're yet to see which stage will be pulled out of the pool for them. But uh, as I just told Isamusing, he needs to go full throttle. Try to take it to Unifankinen and see I what I love your pro there. advice, man. Just go full, full yeah. throttle. Sometimes in between, brake a bit. Might use the handbrake. Steering input will be great on the way. Uh, making that happen, but we're ready for semi-final number one and our contestants. So there we are. It is Yuna Pankinen versus Ice Amusing. Toyodera Yaris GR versus Fort Puma. So I think that's the first time we see that combination. And not just that, it's also wet here in Chile. It is wet, which is good to see. Uh, it's the first wet stage that we've had of the day. And it's really nice to see two different car manufacturers represented as well. So this will be a good one. And it's uh, an uphill, very twisty stage. Um, so you need a lot of confidence. You need to break very late into the hairpins and carry that speed up the up the hill. I did that stage already in, in the wet, I can tell you, um, on one of our spring evenings. And it's not an easy one. It is a weird mix between high speed but then technical corners, not, not, not because they're narrow, but because they're always banged a bit in one direction and stuff like that. Not easy at all. Whoa, that was very close here. Ooh, for eyes and music you hit the and bank of the, the wall. back left. Um, not but you, perfect. You're correct, it's a technical location, but the thing about the corners is they're not short corners, in my opinion. They always contain, they continue around, yeah. so you have to wait much longer. I think that quite close to each other as of right now. You could match up here. Obviously, when we ask Eyes Amusing about this matchup, he's like, okay, that, that's done and dusted. Yes. Yona will beat me. Um, and once again, he was surprised about making it. So I, do, I know I don't say anything new to the broadcast here, but that's really his reaction when we talked to him in the tweet. Oh, that was a bit wide yeah. for Eyes Amusing. Not getting it, uh, sticking on the inside there, went over the front tires. that gave the upper hand now to Yona, but they're still very, very close. Guild Esports, obviously a new name within Esports WC. We did not he have them here before. And w if they could start with a final um, appearance right away, they would be very, very happy. But we also saw that no matter how smooth the owner was in qualifying, he did make a mistake during the semi-final stage, uh, during the quarter-final He stage. did, he had, a, he had a spin and uh, yeah, I think, do you know what? Eyes Amusing is really giving him a race for his money right now. There, there's not much between them. And I think that put, puts pressure on Yuna. So right now, I think it's exciting as uh, Eyes Amusing just hits the wall there again, but no issue. Same mistake, kind of, right? It seems like he's running those long corners a bit too long in the end. And then always dabbing one of the walls and slightly touching the rear bumper. Hopefully that one is still on. Nice cut over the inside there. Trading around. But we're not even halfway through yet. Our very first wet stage that we see, uh, as we explained before, it's a coin toss right before um, the stage, which I absolutely love. The drivers are still sitting here around. Like, the next pairing waits for the stage they get. They have no clue what they will be racing at. And that's what I love about uh, this knockout trophy this year as a start and, and kickoff, first kickoff to the eSports WC that's happening in 2024. Both now passing. Uh, be hot place, kinda. Uh, it seems like you're you know rotating the car a bit less than Ice Amusing. You know Ice Amusing's right brought this back. Look how close it is. 
it's oh no! And then you jinx it, kinda. Ooh. John, you jinxed it. Curse of the the commentator. Yeah, that was half a second, if at all. And then Ice and Eugene tapped those uh, trees on the right side. Now also taking the fence, and those fences cost money for the WSC. Don't take them down. So much to build, build them up once again. Let's see if that takes out another sign on his run. He really wants to catch up to Yuna once again. They're sitting right next to each other, so you, you kind of feel what's happening next to you. Yeah, and if you glance across at your opponent, you can sort of see where they are on the stage relative to where you are. And uh, yeah, it, it can be easy to get distracted, so you don't want to look too often. But I've been really impressed by his he He has been doing a really solid job here. And uh, he's made a couple of mistakes. Without those mistakes, I'd argue he could be in the lead right now. Yeah, I, I think it would have been at least very, very, very close, right? I mean, he, he managed to come back from that previous mistake uh, below half a second. But now he's a bit off. And I, I think it's now the missing confidence. He was very aggressive. I mean, you saw that with the cuts he did, right? And he was willing to give it all. But now he steps back a tiny bit, maybe waiting for a mistake while well, Yuna actually clips that wall, mm -hmm. going up the hill once again. It is a tough stage. I mean, look how fast it is. It's, looking at the KPH, it doesn't look crazy, right? We're mostly below 100, but this is not easy at all, going up the hill then. Yeah, the, the average speed is quite low, and they're always going uphill on this stage, so the car struggles to scramble its way up the hill, and the engine's really struggling as well, so it's really important actually to rely on that hybrid boost to give yourself an extra couple of kph on these uphill sections so that's something that they'll obviously have in mind but have to say yuna p he's got half a sector left to go and uh i'd be surprised if he threw it away at this point yeah he's, he's doing very well i think he got a great balance right now of pushing just enough but not looking like he's actually really risking it. It looks solid, very much under control, no matter the corner we're looking at. And Ice Amusing is just a bit more on the edge. He's trying harder than Yuna right now. He is. He, he's giving it everything. I would say he's making a little bit of time back up now, but yeah, I, it's not going to be quite enough without an issue from Yuna P. He's got a couple of corners left to go. Oh, another mistake by Ice Amusing. Catching it once again with the rear. We talked about that, right? In the wet, it's, it slides away a tiny bit, get out of his hand, and then he touches the rear. Oh, crazy cut here for Yuna Pankinen. But he will be our very first driver going through to the grand finale here of the Knockout Trophy 2023. Great job and nice music. <laughs> that, by the way, is kind of like the combat mechanic because uh, in the previous Esports WC, we dared him to go reverse over the line if he has a really bad race. And actually on that day, he got food poisoning and he d had no control anymore. He was dying out there on stage, oh unfortunately. No. And then he actually crossed it reverse. So I think that was kind of a throwback yeah. uh, that we saw there. But not being able here to beat Guild Esports and Yuna Pankinen. And with that, we have to say goodbye to the lovely Brit for not making it into the grand finale. So who will be facing Yuna Pakkanen in the finale? We know very, very soon. Basically, we know at the end of 9.3 kilometers here in Monte Carlo. 9.3 kilometers of dry Monte Carlo on tarmac. So basically exactly what Moritz Luna was Exactly. Doing, right? yeah. So it will be interesting, not wet. So that's the, the big difference to chili we had before. Uh, but as you said, it is dry tarmac. But on the other hand, it's not like Nexel is not good on tarmac. He is really, really good. This stage, we don't know. this stage is super fast at the beginning. It's really, really high speed. It's committed stuff down into a tight uh, one right. So this is completely flat out. You say that, and then I see a big drift already. Oh. Oh, it's been like catching part of the curb stone there. That was uh, Na Naxal with a massive spin on our right screen here. And uh, yeah, it looks like at the minute. Oh, that was Nexel. My yeah. mistake here. I thought that was Moritz Luna, but it was Nexel. You're absolutely right. And it really shows how, under how much pressure they are to make it here. To, into our very first finale. There was no esports event on this game before. It just came out a few weeks ago, right? And now we're here in Warsaw for our second semi-final. A bit of a wall contact there for Moritz Luna, but he kept it together. 
And so far, I think it's Nexel leading a tiny bit here. He is. Nexel's just edged out ever so slightly. And we're going to get into a more technical section of the track now. And hopefully that will allow Moritz to... Oh, as he hits the wall there, he's got away with it, though. Hopefully no puncher following that. Yeah. yeah. He could pick up damage there. Like oh, Nexel, 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 But also Nexel now with a mistake. But that's the, mis that's the um, change in rhythm, right? Going yeah. from the super fast open part into this more narrow, more technical part of the stage. Totally. And I would say that it's pretty equal now. Yeah, it's a t I think it's a tie lead by Nexel right now. The four-time eSports WC champion wants to add another achievement to his long, long list of rally wins within the uh, sim racing and eSports world. And Morris Luna would love to add another game where yeah. he has a trophy, right? Uh, it's a different one, so he's definitely not someone that is stuck to one game throughout his career. But it would be his first big rally win. This is super impressive. Um, did I just say... Did impressive. I just, did I just that's super impressive. Did I combine impressive with impressive? I, I think, think that I did. fits. Yeah. To be honest, that's totally fine with me. Yeah, let's go with it. Um, <laughs> super impressive. And uh, yeah, we're just coming up to the final sector now. And it's very difficult to call. I think this is a dead heat right now. It's still Nexel with a bit of a lead, although Moritz Luna also, I think, uh, quicker than his personal best here. Just doing a great job. That was another mistake by Nexel, catching a tiny bit of that rot wall on the right, losing a bit of momentum. Still in front of the Mouse Sports driver here in our last sector at Monte Carlo, the very last semi final we will have today. And whoever wins will face off against Juna Pankinen of Guild Esports in our big grand finale coming up next. And it might look like it is once again Nexel, big cut off for Moritz here, trying really to be super, super quick on that long sector where you're all the way flat out. But the Frenchman is still leading in form of Nexel here. He's coming across the line very, very this soon. Is coming so around close. the corner. There's the line. There is Moritz. And is it's 310 it? against 310. It's actually Nexel going through by 0.2 of a second in this semifinal. That's unbelievable. So, so close. We did see it throughout the whole stage. It was neck and neck. And uh, that was such a good run by Mortz to, to really bring it to Nexel there. That wow. was impressive. 0.2 after 9.3 kilometers. This, this is what we came for. This yeah, is the, exactly. That's the battle we wanted. Crazy. The Mouse Sports driver is now eliminated thanks to Nexel. But I think he had a great showing here on his first eSports WSC event so far. Absolutely incredible pace of both drivers. Minor mistakes here and there, but overall just a very, very fast performance. Totally, and I think those minor mistakes is just showing how much they were pushing, how hard they were trying, and oh, just... Can't even grasp it. Point I was expecting now something like, I don't know, one and a half seconds. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. And then you see the, the bow end times is like 0.2. Are you kidding me? <laughs> We had to say goodbye to another two of our drivers here in the semi-finals. In the first matchup, it was Yuna Pankinen who reigned supreme on a wet chilly stage, ending the dream of British race clutch driver Ice Amusing of moving into the final. With one last spot available for the grand final, the second semis did not disappoint at all. The difference of 0.2 of a second decided between going through to the finals or being eliminated from the knockout trophy. In the end, it was Nexel winning the Monte Carlo stage, sending Moritz Luna back home to Germany. The moment we were waiting for and an entire day of rallying kind of comes to an end. But not just yet, we still have one stage, John, and it is the Clash of the Titans we were kind of hoping for. I mean, there were so many other combinations I saw as great for the grand finale, but this one is super great then. It's like, it's the next step. <laughs> it's the next step, and I think it's the, the one that was the most likely to happen given their credentials. But uh, yeah, Nexel versus Unipi, it's going to be a big battle. Um, the stage, do we know what the stage is yet? We're going to no, have to we, see. we don't know. They but um, depending on the stage, it could favor one than the other. But uh, yeah, we've got some nice shiny trophies. Jona Pankinen versus Nexel. And let's bring them up for the grand finale. A very last time we rolled the cars up to the starting line here on our final stage. Back in Chile. 
So predictions, real quick, John. Prediction: Dead or Solid Nine? Who's winning this? Oh, I can't. I can't favor one than the other. I'm, I'm just really excited. To Win see. against your drive in the next season, just so Ooh. that you know. If I beat you on this one, what's your prediction? I'm gonna go with Unipy. All right, then I will go with Nexel. If Nexel wins, that means next year round you will see me in the rally car that John normally pilots around. <laughs> um, you heard it here, live in the show. It's there. That's a promise. But we're off to a great start for both drivers, I would say. We have Nexel here coming down that hill section. It's just so fun in Chile, how you get like into those ditches, out of them again. And it's so hard to know how much weight you bring into that corner due to the change of banking. And it's the elevation and the dips, like you'll come over a crest, down through a dip, and then the suspension compresses. And it's trying to predict how the car is going to react in those instances. But I have to say, both drivers having a great start here, but P is really going for it. I think you can you can sense the attack from the the body language of the car, and uh, yeah, Nexel's not too far behind though. It's Nexel showy style today versus uh, Yuna Pankinen's uh, smooth sailing that he showed us on most of the stages. It is. Winning this here, it's a good start into next year's eSports WRC. It sets the tone, gives you a lot of confidence boost. Like, this is not the big eSports WRC season at all. It's a, it's a kick oh, off event, but that's off. a big, big off here for Nexel. And I, I think that's because he changed the car. He changed to a Model 3. <laughs> and that landed to hit that tree. That's a very oh. bad dad joke. I'll probably get blamed for that a bad lot. joke, but... Um, yeah. That's but definitely put a <laughs> dent in his chances here, but let's see if he can bring it back. He's went wide oh, oh, again. Is it, once again, now it's so hard to come back mentally from that. Like, he knows he did a big mistake and that Yona isn't one that does a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Maybe once during a tournament, it seems. And he is the Dirt Rally World Champion versus the Esports WC World Champion. Nexel's already brought a bit of time back here, but he is pushing to fast. That was nearly a flip. That, that was, was almost off again. The John Armstrong Memorial flip of 2018. <laughs> but you, if you have to, if you flip it, then you also have to win. Otherwise, not Trying worth it. So many mistakes now for Nexel, one after the other. I think he's really out of rhythm, and that gives a big gap now into the hands of Jona Pankinen, who does a great job of just keeping the car there where it needs to be. Beautiful happen Beautiful from happen. here. Yeah, a lot of momentum carried up the hill while uh, Nexel was struggling in that corner a tiny bit. So it's looking like the brand new entry for us, coming from that World Championship, full guild esports, is looking to set up his first ever trophy on the new game, but we're only halfway through the stage so far. Yeah, and Nexel's made another uh, impact with the bank there. It is a very rugged run from Nexel, I have to say. Um, interesting thing about the way that Nexel likes to play is a very low degrees of rotation, but it means that everything's on a knife edge, you know, the, the balance of the car is very much just in the center, so it's really difficult to do those quick reactions without losing the car. Yeah, so far that didn't prove successful, at least on this stage here in Chile. And as we said, they didn't do the, uh, the track before, the stage before, nor the conditions that they will face. And it seems that here, on that medium gravel, you want a punk and feels right at home, great style, good flowy style especially. Mm. Always feels like he takes so much momentum out and into every single corner out there, using the boost nicely out of that one and spreading the lead here, doing a good job. But we also know you should never rule out Nexel and you should also never rule out a mistake. Yeah, that's it. It's never over until it's actually crossing the finish line and uh, I have to say though that Yuna is extending his lead even further here. Uh, it's been a really solid run, smooth, almost effortless performance here from Yuna. Uh, and that's, a, that's a feeling that I had during his qualification. Yeah. I was standing behind him seeing the qualification. Incredible. And it's it's weird because it, on the screen it looks very smooth and soft. And then you see here how it, because he's using a proper shifter. Handbrake shifter, everything to his right, like old school sequential shifter. And he tends to be a bit brutal on that. He's really like action packed, dang, dang, through the gears. But then you see how it, that translates into the game, and he's so smooth. Yeah, he, he's using the full equipment, like you said, the sequential and the handbrake. And uh, Yuna has actually done a few lo real life rallies, so I think he gets into like this uh, the sort of effort that you have in real life with uh, lots of arms going everywhere. But um, <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's doing a good job Another here. Another minor mistake. 
by Nexel. Once again, flipping with the rear part of the car there. Not a great showing for the French previous champion. As we are in the last half of the last sector for the Esports WSC Knockout Trophy 2023. Does it go to France or is it going to Finland? Turning on up, Pankinen. Pankinen's getting very close. He's on the final stretch now, but he's got one final big crest to get over here, which is a bit tricky. Beautiful view, though of the mountains in Chile as Yuna Pankinen approaches the very last turns for him actually claiming the very first trophy on the new game EA Sports WSC and the trophy will go to Finland to Yuna Pankinen and the previous eSports WSC champion that is Nexel with a great finish <laughs> here throwing it across the line but it just wasn't enough over 10 seconds in the end the gap between those two drivers on this high impact battle that we just saw a bit surprising seen so many mistakes wonder was there really down to was a pressure on on Nexel? i think it was one of those situations where he made a mistake early in the race he went down the bank slightly and lost the car and then he tried to gain the time back just how he should he should he had to attack to, to earn that time back but whenever you start to attack you push too much and then you make more mistakes and that's what we saw happened and yeah. Exactly, and maybe we see revenge then next year for 2024. So if you're interested in all of this and you're thinking of eSports WSC rallying, that's what I want to do, then look out for any information coming out next year. Get qualified, get in there. That's really your big chance to maybe be with us on one of the stages somewhere in the world. We don't know. Freshly out of the rig and a fresh new champion that we have here. Unipi, congratulations. You're actually the very first champion on a brand new title, but that wasn't an easy one, was it? That definitely wasn't easy, you know, Nexel has a lot of experience from the WRC Games Championships and, you know, he's a multiple time champion in WRC and uh, I have championship wins in DIRT, so we went head to head and uh, I think I had a better day this time. We talked about that's kind of setting the tone for next year's eSports WRC, do you think that gives you the right push to be a top player there as well? Mm, I haven't really thought about much about uh, next year and about eSports and all, but um, I think uh, this hypes me up for it, potentially, so we will see what happens next year. Better get ready, better buy a few sh new shifters and handbrakes, you might need them with your style. We talked about that on camera, absolutely lovely, your drive was incredible up to the final and then obviously in the final you de definitely delivered. So that one's your trophy, presented by John Armstrong, that's what you're getting. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Very thank you, thank you. <laughs> And it also kind of means that we actually come to the end of the very first uh, Knockout Trophy 2023. Thanks, Jonah, for, for being here with us. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, it has been absolutely awesome. The event has been super cool for the competitors and all. It's uh, such an experience. Uh, I'm so thankful to be here and uh, it was super nice to even win. It's, uh, it's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you also to Warsaw for hosting us kind of here, for all of our partners making it happen, obviously, EA. That's, that's you, Kaina, so he will be presenting right now. Thank you for the beautiful game that we were just about to watch and obviously the WSC for making all of this happening. And that means there's nothing left to say other than 2024, there will be more of that. You can get involved, so watch out on all the social channels out there for more eSports WSC action. My name is Renee, and I'll see you guys next time.